Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. This is Mike from Agnostic Front, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews Today, it's a huge honor and a very huge privilege to be talking to Mike Gallo, bassist of Agnostic Front. Hard to believe a band first called Zoo Crew would emerge as always respected godfathers of hardcore, now known as Agnostic Front. Legendary New York hardcore pioneers Agnostic Front are back with their 12th studio album called Get Loud, which will be released November 8th via Nuclear Blast. And this is the second time working with producer Paul Miner. This year is the 35th anniversary of Agnostic Front's debut full-length album, Victim in Pain, released in 1984 on Rat Cage Records. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So, Mike, how's it going, man? And welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Great to be talking to you. So let's jump right into this bad boy. How's it been working with Nuclear Blast for you guys? You know, I got to say, Nuclear Blast are really great. Uh, we have a really good relationship with everybody at the label. And, um, you know, they're really great to work with. It's a great label to be on. I mean, every other metal band is on on that label, it seems. I mean, Slayer to, um, Jesus, everybody. I mean, it's like, they're great. They're really great to work with. And, uh, you know, one of the guys, Tommy, who works over at the at the label, he, um, he put together a brand new video for us just, out of the kindness of his heart, just he loved the band and um, he wants to help promote. But he, the um, song, the title, the first song on the record, "Spray Painted Walls." He did a video and he put a lot of my artwork in it, which is really cool. So it all kind of ties together. So I mean, like they've been really great to work with. Agnostic Front, Godfathers of Hardcore, have been around for thirty plus years. You joined in two thousand. What's it mean to you to be part of this New York hardcore pioneering band? that is still paving the way for bands out there today, still to this day, Mike. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, an, it's been an incredible journey, I have to say. It's really been a lot of fun. It's had a hell of a lot more ups and downs. You know, it's just um, Vinny and Roger have always been kind of like father figures to me, and, you know, they've helped me really become the man I am today, you know. I mean, they took me all over the world, and um, it, it's just incredible, you know, to, to actually be pretty much a staple in the band today. I've been with them over 18 years. And, uh, you know, I was a kid, I was a fan. So, you know, I, they were always like one of my favorite bands. New York Hardcore was just my thing, you know? And uh, it's something that I found as a later teen and has just been, become my life, you know, my whole, my whole everything, you know? I mean, it just taught me it just taught me a lot in life, you know, all the, the, the message really spoke to me. And like, and to be honest with you, like, I feel like as a kid, you know, uh, you know, as a kid, I was very, very easily influenced. And I don't know, sometimes, you know, I, I feel like there's times in my life where I followed the trends and stuff. And like, I feel that like getting into this music and the strong message of it really shaped and helped me become the man I really am today, you know? And um, I really owe a lot of that just to New York hardcore. And, you know, even being... In this band, you know, it's really, um, it's made me the solid person I feel I am today. Speaking of the New York hardcore, what about the bands today? Are there any bands right now that stick out for you possibly that, uh, you know, that, that could carry the torch when this band finally says, okay, we're, we're going to step away? Well, I mean, you know, I, I really love Wisdom and Chains. I think they're an incredible band that's, um, and you know, they, they put in their work. They've been around a long time, but I just feel like their music their message and everything about them. They're, um, they're great people. They write great songs. And I think that they're the ones who could carry the tour. Although they don't tour as extensive as I wish they would, or would be able to. So that may be a problem, but I mean, I just feel that that's, they're, they're the one band that's come around in the past, you know, 15 years or so. That's like, 
they're for real. They're, they're, I believe in them. I, I feel their music. You know what I mean? Mm. I believe in it. This year is the 35th anniversary of Agnostic Front's debut full-length album, Victim in Pain, released in 1984 on Rat Cage Records. So this full-length still stands strong today. How big of an impact did this album make in hardcore music at that time? Or what impression did it leave with you after you heard it for the first time, man, possibly? I mean, you know, that is a uh, very celebrated record, people... People love that record, you know, just the raw intensity of it. And it basically is like, to me, that's just like the New York hardcore Bible. You know what I mean? That, that's what really, that put New York, I mean, you know, New York hardcore was the thing, obviously, before that record came out. But that was the, that, that was it, you know, like when that record dropped, New York, I mean, the Agnostic Front just, just took over. They were, they, they were the kings. They were our you know, like they were just that record is just it's till today people still come up to me and just tell me how even their kids love it and they're getting their you know, they're getting even the younger generation to it. It's just um just the message, uh, the spirit, the energy, just everything about it is really um it's an incredible record. And I not because I'm an agnostic for it, but I think it's the best New York hardcore record ever written. It's it really is. So what do you think, man, when you see these these families that are generations upon generations handing down agnostic French music, man? It's cool, you know what I mean? Because, like, you can go to our show and, you know, and, you know, we have kids at our show for anywhere from, like, six to eight to ten. I mean, my daughter was at the show having a great time. She's four. You know, so, like, <laughs> from four to, like, I don't know, I've met people at our shows are almost 70 years old. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah. It's pretty incredible, you know, that, like, it's timeless, this music. It really yeah. is, you know? I mean, it's just, uh, I think that, I mean, I remember seeing my first hardcore show and just being like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen, you know? Like, that I've never seen it because I've been to plenty of concerts and, you know, shows and small shows, bigger shows, and nothing like you see an hardcore show. It's, it's like another world. It, it, it's so intense that, like, I, it'll never die. There's just no way. It'll never die. This is just, you know, it's it's just it's too intense. It's too it's too real for for it not to just stick. You know, sometimes it's a little higher, a little lower. Everything goes through cycles. You know, yeah. but uh, it's here to stay. You and, know, and you know, I still hear the want. I still I still hear the passion in your guys' music. If that makes sense, I still feel it as a fan. You know, I, f I feel like it's not phoned in. You guys are actually truly still believing what you're what you're singing about and talking about. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like this is this is our lives. You know, this is not just something we do. Um, we actually live this. <laughs> you know, like you know, especially with the amount of tour we've been doing this year. I mean, we you know we all have a little part time jobs and everything, but this is our main thing. This is our lives. This is our everything. So we have nothing. We have no choice but to put our everything into it. You know what I mean? And um, we're passionate about what we do. We believe in what we do, and that's what keeps us from from still around. You know, thirty eight years later. You know, me eight, eighteen years later in this band. You know, it's just like this is um this is for real. You know, we're not some kind of band that's gonna play and then say we're gonna quit and then cash in on a, on a, on a reunion show or anything corny like that. You know, like. You know, this this is our lives. We do this every day. Get Loud is Agnostic Front's 12th studio album. How does it feel to be able to put out a full-length album today, especially since so much has changed in the music world for bands now? And you know that just as well as I do. So much has changed. So how does it feel oh, to yeah. be able to still put one out? Well, it's, you know, it's like I said, you know, like, like this is our lives. This is everything we do, you know, I mean, uh, we we believe in ourselves and you know like we don't want, we want to give back to the fans you know what i mean like and, and that's important it's a give and take thing you know especially in our community in the hardcore world and uh you know we just we love it you know we love this new release we we feel really strongly about it we think there's a lot of great songs and uh we can't wait to play play them live and we had a great time putting it together and writing it and then recording it that was another great experience, and uh, you know we're just uh, we're just doing it, man. You know uh, we have got so much going on that the release of the Godfather of the Hardcore movie, filmed by Amy McFarland, Bridget Knight, 
releasing that shortly as well. So we have that. We just landed um, a show with the Misfits in yep. Philly. Yep. So that's the big one. So we just were, you know, we, we got we got so much going on that um, we're on 11 right now. You know, there's, <laughs> we got a lot going on. And it's, um, it's a good time to be involved in music right now, especially with what we got going on. We're, we're, as a band, we're all excited. Yeah, we're going to talk about the Misfit show here just a little bit later. That that is that's on my list here for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's impressed or excited you the most about making the new album, if anything? Also, how crucial is it to still stay true to Agnostic Front's hardcore roots, but maybe add some new elements to the new album? Get loud. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you got to evolve a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what's really cool about, from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, is the fact that they're saying. We feel that like this record takes you back has a lot of feel of the old school, but yet it still sounds, it still feels current. It's still like, it's still like modern. You know what I mean? So it's like a modern feel on the old school vibe. You know what I mean? So, and I just think it works well together, you know, and, um, you know, like we said, it was just uh, an incredible process putting it all together and uh, just, you know, it's great. We're excited. Writing the new songs, were there any that pushed you guys out of your comfort zone than what you're used to, or maybe change it up, possibly? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if anything actually put us out of the comfort zone. You know, I mean, we do like to experiment with different stuff. You know what I mean? But it's just, it, it, it's a tricky thing when writing new music. You know, because like we always try to to give the people a little bit different of a record each time we do it. If you're a fan of the, of the band, you know that there's not one record that really sounds like another. You know what I mean? It's all got, everyone has a, has a different feel. Yep. And then some of them have a lot of, like lately what we've been kind of doing is um, kind of trying to give everybody, like since we have so many errors of the band, people like different errors. So, you know, I just think that like, you know, we all have our different styles of writing and we all bring it together. And then, you know, it gives you different elements of the band, you know? So, um, it's, it's hard to say if there's anything that really pushed us out of our comfort zone, but you know, it's, um, it's a, a, the process of writing, you know, so we were pretty much wrote every, most of the music on the road together, you know? So, um, and then my brother helped out with us. He added his two cents here and there. And, uh, you know, Roger produced the record. So that was pretty cool. You know, it was good for him to, um, really get that title because he worked really hard on the record and, got it point wait so he he thought it was a hundred percent so he deserved and owns that title so yeah it was nice to just have you know roger do that for us you know it was good to have like him to be the producer because he's pretty much the boss of the band you know so it made sense yeah how long did it take to write and complete the album well you know we started gathering songs up you know slowly about a couple of years ago you know and then as time goes on we really started putting it, putting it together, but I definitely say about two years to put it together, and we recorded it in ten days. Any tracks standing out more to you, Mike, than any right now on the album? I know it must change every time you listen to it or every time you talk about it, but do you have any that stick out for you, possibly? Yeah, you know, I really do love the first song on the record. I think it's my favorite song, as um, I like playing it. I think it kind of touches on each era of the band, you know. It, 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 you know what I mean? It, it, in a hole as a song, you know, and um, I don't know, there's something about that song. I don't know what it is. I just, I, it's my favorite track. I love. I remember. I think that's a really personal song about like you know Vinny and Roger how they started the band and um, the video that they did ties in all together. There's a lot of clips from the movie, and uh, it really you know it really ties the movie and the song and, and the album together, which is really cool. So I, I, re- I really love that track. Um, there's Conquer and Divide. We did a video to. That's another great track. Really thrashy, chorus for alarm sounding type song. I love the album title. Get Loud is another great one. Really catchy one. Uh, Urban Decay. AF Stomp. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I'm really digging the whole record. There's a lot of stuff, and I try to. Um, I try not to listen to it all the time because you put so much work, so much heart and soul into it. You finally finish it, you get the final track, you hear it masses and everything, you listen to it a couple of times, and then, you know, then you're playing it for your friends, and then um, so a lot of times I like to just take take it back, and um, I don't listen to it for like a, like a week or two, you know, and then I go back 
and you know listen to it. And then there's another song that I like even better than the last time I heard it. You know, so it's it's refreshing every time I hear it. And I want to jump back here just a little bit because when you were talking about the albums. And you're so right, man. Each Agnostic Front album is different. Every single one. There's not an album that you could say, oh, this sounds like this album. No, you really can't because they all sound differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's funny because I can't honestly say that we do that on purpose. Right. You know what I mean? We we really don't. We just kind of like write what we write and just do whatever we do. I guess we're into different stuff at different times and you know, but I just think I like we don't really want to write the same thing over and over. That's just like we strive to do different stuff because it's like I guess who wants to write the same damn thing over and over again? It's it's just like hey, there's so many bands out there that it works for, and I say God bless them. You know what I mean? But it's just like I don't know. It, it's it's exciting to to deliver something different. You know, like like having a kid. Each kid's going to be different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like each record is going to be different. It's just, I think it's a, um, it's something to me that's refreshing to hear all the time. Every time you hear it, it's just like, oh, it's something different. I don't know. I've always been, I've always been a fan of Agnostic Front, and I like always how they evolved. You know, whether you like this era or other people like this era, but you know, it's just, um, I think it's great to actually, yeah, do something different. You know, you know, we don't even like try it. It just, it just happens that way. You know what I mean? That's just how we do things. Was it hard, Mike, to choose between the current set of songs? Which one would be the first single or video you guys wanted to release or push for the album? Or did you have outside help to decide on this? I think, you know, as a band, we all we all knew which which track stood out more, you know? I feel like, you know, I, I think, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you, when you listen to it, you, you can tell, like, I mean, I think, I feel like, after we finished recording, we did the background vocals for I Remember, Mm-hmm. After we walked out of the studio, we knew that was going to be the one we'll be doing. It's just like, you know, we walked out of there happy and just being like, yeah, I think people are going to like this one. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's it's, the one you that know, And then like, yeah, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you know, we, we, we had that feeling. We like walked out and we were like, yes, this this is a big song. Like, we felt it, you know? We were like, this is great. But, uh, yeah, you know, so I think, I think along the lines, we, we pretty much do what... You know, which songs we felt are stronger, and um, I don't know, but everyone has a difference of opinion, so you, so you know what I mean? I don't know, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we pick the right songs that we thought people were going to like, and, uh, you know, maybe if um, people give us some insight, maybe we'll do um, another one. Um, you know, who knows? I don't know. In your own opinion, what do you hope everyone takes away or message you hope to hear by listening to any of agnostic French music in general? What do you hope they get from it? In all honesty, you know, it, it, it's always, uh, you know, you know, you pr- you know what you're getting with an agnostic front record. You know, we, we think about brotherhood and unity and just basically what's going on in the world, you know. And like the thing that mostly that actually keeps me from actually even doing this is that to hear that people say, you know, your lyrics speak to me. You know, they help me get through another day. And that alone is just why we keep doing this, you know. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah. As, long, as long as we keep hearing that. I guess we're um, doing our job, you know. We're we're, we're, um, we're spreading a positive message to people, and um, and that's that's what we, that's what we, that's what we do, you know. You hit the nail on the head right there. That that's exactly what I was going to say. I love the positivity and inspirational music behind this band. I love it. That that's what gave me inspiration to you know overcome some of the things that I went through by listening to some of your guys' music, which I love. And thank you all. Yeah, man. I thank you. I appreciate it. Get Loud was produced by Roger Merritt, while longtime friend Paul Miner handled the recording, mixing, and mastering of the record at Buzz Bomb Studio in Orange, California. This is the second time yeah. working with Paul. What is it working with Paul that is just so comfortable with you guys? And plus, how's working with Roger, producer Roger versus bandmate? <laughs> Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, pretty much the same, you know I mean? Roger is Roger, you know I mean? He's got a really strong personality, and he's a leader, and, um, you know, whatever he says goes, and <laughs> that's, you know, but, you know, Roger Roger knows his band better than anybody, so at this point, they produced it, you know? You know, his brother's been helping out with us, Freddie from Mabel, he produced a couple of records, 
in the past, which worked out very well. But Paul Miner is an incredible engineer and um, very easy to work with, very fast. And just, you know, like working with him on that last record, we kind of feel that he really got us as a band. I, I think he really captured what we were trying to capture on the past few records and really just hit the nail on the head and, like, Listening to that last record, The American Dream Died, I'm like, this is what Agnostic Front should sound like today. And he really did it again on this last one. Now you guys also worked with artist Sean Taggart again, who did 1986's Cause for the Alarm for this album. And he included the iconic yeah, CFA. Absolutely. He also included the iconic CFA characters combined with the modern freshness. How was working with him again on, on this album? Well, you know, I mean, like, me. And Roger were talking, and we came to the decision that listening to all of the music, even just on the demo wise, we're like this is going to be a heavier, thrashier record than like the last one. So it was, like, it was almost, it was almost kind of like the last record kind of sounded a very, a little like Victim in Pain, but this one sounded a little bit more like Cause for Alarm. So we, we thought it would be great to bring back Sean to do the to do the record. And even to bring back those same characters, which is kind of in the new scenery, you know? And it really just, I, I keep saying, it's basically the icing on the cake that, that completes the record. It really just um, it really just tied it all together. And um, Sean's artwork has just always been incredible and inspiring, even to me as an artist. So it was just really great to work with him, you know? Because actually when... Well, writing this, I do a lot of art, and I sent some stuff to Roger to see if he liked it. And he liked it a lot, but he said he felt like it didn't have the same feel as he was looking for. And I kind of agree with him. You know, like a lot of my stuff is a little pop art, graffiti, you know, artsy, you know. But like this, like Sean Taggart style has got that wild, crazy, just, (laughs) you know, it's just fit the music so well so that we were just like yeah let, let, let's go with Sean man like that was such it was a really cool experience to work with him again and uh, we're just happy with the records I mean overall the artwork to the music it just it really works so what does Agnostic Front still bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now if anything I mean I know no one's reinventing the wheel but what are you guys still adding to that wheel well, you know, just like you say, you know, every time we do a new record, it's a little something different. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, there's a lot of bands out there that, you know, they come and go, you know? And um, I think people see that, like, we are a band that's not going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? You're going to get nothing but truth and honesty and 100% on stage every night. And uh, we've been doing this for how many years? And people know that, and that goes a long way. And that's why we can play anywhere over the world and still draw an audience, you know, and um, I think that's um, that's something that's that's for real. That's something you, that's just, uh, you know, it takes a lot for a band to have the right chemistry and, the, and all of that, you know, and that's what we bring to the table, a lot of raw energy and positive vibes. If people can come out here and release their anger and lose their minds for a minute or, or an hour or whatever, you know what I mean, to just get away from their everyday lives and... Um, that's what helps you get through. You know, some people like to go to church. Some people like to go in the mosh pits and slam dance and scream their fucking heads off <laughs> so they feel better. In fact, I like to do that. Some, I, I need to do that very soon before I lose my mind. <laughs> I'm having a crazy, 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 crazy month. <laughs> so, but, um, so I, I may need to go to a show and fucking release myself a little bit, man, because <laughs> it's been a long time. And, you know, that's like church to me. And uh, obviously, you know, I get to release it on stage, but sometimes it's different on the other side, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely understand that. With having so much music in the Agnostic Front Library, is there a song you want to add to the set list that hasn't been played yet, maybe possibly? If any, ah, oh, man, you know what? There is, you know, there's, there's, a, um, cu- there's a couple that I'm trying to think of. I really, I, we haven't played, I really like the song of a live at Phoebe's record, Genesis, that we haven't played in a really long time. That's one. I like Bernie Schutz's as well. That's always been <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> I just love the, the, the music, the, 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 
everything, you know? It's just, that's a brutal song. I love that song. I'm trying to think. There's another one with something I've got to give I really like that we that I don't think they've ever played. The one, I think, um, The Blame. The Blame's a really great tune. I love that song, you know? Jimmy Gestapo's got a, he sings on that one. It's from Murphy's Law. And uh, I love that song. Yeah, so those are, those are a couple that I'd love to work into the set. You know, I think, I think those songs are great. Okay, so here here's my best question I, I waited for a while to ask here. So December 14th, yourself and the Dropkick Murphys are going to be opening up for the original Misfits, Glenn, Jerry, and Doyle Wolfgang. How stoked are you guys to be opening at this reunion show for these guys? I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like a dream come true, you know. I mean, especially even I know even for Roger, I know Roger, it's his favorite band. You know, it's it's, it's a huge event. I mean, the Misfits, like, the Misfits were just, you know, I mean, one of those bands, like, if you're into this music, you can't just not love, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, they are the, one of those bands. And they're our friends, too, you know, and it's really cool. And we're excited that they gave this opportunity to us to actually open up for them, you know, in like in an arena. So I'm pretty excited about that because a band like us, we don't really get to do big things like that. And it's not that many bands that have actually even put us on, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, my, the only two other bands that really took us out is Hatebreed and the Dropkick Murphys. That's it. All these other bands that say, oh, we love you guys. We're going to take you guys out. They never do, you know? So like we've done this on our own, you know? Pretty much no help from anybody besides like maybe Jamie and Hapri. It's really great that um, Glenn and Jerry, Doyle they, and Dave, that they actually gave us the opportunity to do this. You know, because like I said, you know, we really don't get the opportunity to do anything with any bigger bands, you know, and it's um, it's going to be incredible. We're, we're very excited for it. And folks, these are three iconic bands. You got the Misfits, the Dropkick Murphys, and you got Agnostic Front. To me, you know, I, I'm a huge Misfits fan, but also love yeah, the other two bands. I also love the other two bands just as much. You you can't get uh-huh. any better with a show like this. You know, add rancid stuff like that. But here, here's the thing that bothers me: you have all these music festivals that are out there, and I see all these bands. They're all over the place, but you never see Agnostic Front on these festivals, and that drives me up the wall. And I'm like, you know, there's other bands that could easily easily fit in these festivals honestly and i think you guys should get the nodding and be on a lot of these yeah well you know um we're gonna see what happens i think we got a lot of good things happening for us you know with the new album the record the misfit show and um got the movie coming out roger just released his book we have a lot of good things going on and i think things seem to be going in the right direction for us so hopefully we had bigger events like this and um this is a big year for us so we're excited do you remember what made you want to become a musician possibly what what was the spark that that did it for you you know i come from a family of musicians you know my dad's a musician he my mother played piano my dad my dad's been in bands all his life so i grew up around music and i wasn't always sure i, mean, I remember as a kid i picked up the bass because i mean i loved like you know, bands like Metallica. I'd, I'd probably have to say, you know, listening to Metallica made me kind of want to pick up the bass. And actually, my, I actually wanted to play guitar. My dad said, you know what? Try the bass. He goes, guitar players are a dime a dozen. Every band needs a good bass player. And he knew that because he was in the industry. And it's probably the best advice anybody's ever given me. So, you know, that, that, you know, that definitely was a big influence. And my dad was a huge influence musically in my life. And I remember playing bass, and I got tired of it because I was going to music lessons. It was very boring. Teacher never wanted to show me any riffs that I wanted to learn, and um, I, I quit. I put the bass down. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't play. It wasn't again until I went to go see Murphy's Law. I saw Murphy's Law play at the Wetlands, and I said to myself, "Oh, this is this is this is what I want to do." The next day, I started playing bass again, and here I am now. So it's um, it's all history from there. <laughs> When is this movie going to be coming out for you guys? Let's talk about that just a little bit. Let's talk about the movie when it's coming out. Uh, documentary. What what's it going to be actually? We will be releasing this actually. Probably, I believe in the next few weeks it'll be released on Bridge Nine Records on Blu-ray. 
So that's good. That's some exciting news to work with our friends over in Bridgeline Records, and they're they're, they're great guys. And uh, you know, we we usually we, we put a single out on Bridgeline every time before we do a record. They, they'll release two tracks before our Nuclear Blast actually does. So we've been working with them for a long time. So it felt kind of like those were the right people to work with to get you know the CD because not everybody has show time and not everybody's hip to um, downloading things off of all these new platforms and stuff. So we figured, you know, we, we'd release it. I think it'd be the best thing to do to get it out to all our fans and actually see it, you know? It's, it's, an impo- it's an important part of our history. So if you, if you have, if, if you've ever seen Ignatius Front, or if you even, even if you don't like it, you could, the, new, the movie's great, you know? You don't really even need to, um, you don't even really need to like the band to actually like the movie or even like the hardcore music to enjoy the movie. So it, it's a really important documentary, you know? It's even people that, well, I know even people that never liked the music, they kind of understood it a little bit more after seeing it. And they're actually now, like even my cousins are like, hey, you know, kind of like it now. I kinda, I'm into it. I get it. Now I see where that's coming from. You know what I mean? So, like, I think it's an important thing for us to, to release this thing. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Agnostics Front 12th studio album, Get Loud, which will be released November 8th via Nuclear Blast. Also, you want to get out and attend the December 14th show, which will be at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia with the original Misfits and Dropkick Murphys, also with Agnostic Front. So you want to get out and check out all of this stuff. So, Mike, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with you, pick up merchandise, tour dates, all this good stuff? How can you do that, my friend? I mean, we definitely could check out uh, probably the, uh, the biggest platform right now is Instagram. That's the big thing, you know, um, so, uh, you know, you can just go on at Agnostic Front New York City and check out all our tour dates, all our merchandise, and, and everything that we got going on, from album releases to everything, you know. We even got a Facebook page. So, um, yeah, check that out, you know. We're not easy. We're not hard to find. And before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Yes, let's do it. This is Mike from Agnostic Front, and you're listening to Boz Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and also please, folks, subscribe to our YouTube link. That's where everything and anything will go up for Bod's Mayhem Hour plus our podcast link. Also, please give Agnostic Front a chance. You will love their music. Trust me. It's groovy. It's heavy. It's just all good around get off your ass and dance stuff. Trust me. I like it. I love it. I loved it for a very long time. So Mike, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck and thank you for your music and the inspiration that you have given me to gather to your music. So I definitely love it. And thank you so much again. Thank you. You take care. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.